Yeah, and I think that went well. <laughs> the thing is, you know that Lil Tukado one, I knew it was going to like uh, get me to struggle. Yeah, uh, some of this uh, there, yeah. technical, technical terminology, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Uh, it comes up. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, you did fine. Uh, okay. I'm starting, yeah? Yeah. 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 Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rohan. My name is Arslan. And today we're going to be talking about misconceptions around Ramadan. So the, the first one is, how do Muslims start and break their fasts? How do Muslims start and break their fast? Well, we start our fast at sunrise and we end it at sunset. That's as simple as it gets. Mm -hmm. Well, the way you start a fast, it depends on yourself. If you want to wake up for your pre-dawn meals, which is known as seri, then that's how you would start the fast. And then you would pray. And that's it's called seri, right? Yeah. Or it's suhoor? Yeah, suhoor as well. But I think what they also want to know um, in regards to how you start a break, what do you actually eat? Okay, right. That also depends on the person. Yeah. Um, for myself, I wake up, you know, have my parate, you know. Oh, no, the, <laughs> yeah. the butter ghee yeah. on your naan. Yeah. yeah, but other people, you know, simple fruits, fruits cereal, yes. whatever that will fill them up for the whole day. True. Um, but, you know, if you don't wake up, that doesn't mean you can't fast. If you have the intention to fast from before and you don't wake up, then you can still continue your fast. But there's more, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Sorry. also said that uh, there's more uh, blessings associated with waking up for Seri. That's correct. And that's the important part there. Yeah. Um, I think even with the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, there's a perfect example there of what we should be eating right. for our Seri and Suhoor. And he was someone who uh, would particularly eat dates. Right. Dates is something that we eat. But right. as a kid, I never used to like dates so yeah, much. Yeah. But as you grow up, you come, you become uh, acquainted to them, you become used to them. And now I eat them all the time. It fills you up as well. Yeah, nutritiously, they're yeah. amazing. Honestly, yeah. I mean, even if you have a, you know, a mouthful of water, that's yeah. still a blessing attached to it. So, you know, there's a great emphasis of waking up to start your fast with, yeah. you know, some food or water. Yeah, and the importance is not overeating. Right, right, exactly. Keep your meals as yeah, they yeah. should be. Exactly. In the Quran, it says you start from sunrise and sunset. So at sunset, you, you have the Maghrib Azan, which is the... Um, call to prayer, as soon as that's done, then you open your fast, I'm oh, sorry, you break your fast with dates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same, same, same as yeah. before, basically. You can exactly, have yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next one, doesn't fasting interfere with the work and studies of Muslims? Mm. Doesn't, so it doesn't fasting interrupt, interrupt with like your daily life, oh, right. your work and studies? And I think I get this question a lot. Right, I remember right. back when I used to be in university or school, your friends would be like, oh, how are you getting by your day? Right. I could never fast for 15, 16 hours a day. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you do it. It's so tough on you, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But honestly, when I'm going by through my day, my daily schedule, even now when I'm working in my professional life, yeah. when you're so busy throughout the day, you don't really think about food that much. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're not busy, you're going to be on social media, on TikTok. And, you know, during that time, during Ramzan, that's when you get all those uh, fees of, you know, uh, you know I've, food, got this, uh, I've got this guilty pleasure as well, where I purposefully scroll oh, through right, right, all right. the food TikToks. Yeah, because it gets uh, you more hungry, you know. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. true, it does, yeah. but it also gets you excited for iftar. Right, right, that's true, that's true. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about, I think, creating habits uh, mm -hmm. around your Ramadan. And I think, yeah. what is though, what people often, a lot of other Muslims as well, and they have this uh, misconception that they make it too difficult for themselves. Right, right. When that really shouldn't be the case. Yeah, no, Islam is a religion of ease. So at the end of the day, you know, if something is really interfering with your health, then, you know, you're, you're not obliged to fast. So, you know, you have to look at yourself. If you're able to fast, then you should fast. But for example, for those who are studying, you know, especially the youngsters, it's not obligatory on them to fast, mm. you know? Yeah, definitely. And There's a little bit of struggle that's needed. No, no, of course. But the struggle's needed with everything in life. Ramzan is that month where, you know, you get the spiritual blessings through the struggle. Mm. You know, in anything, even in like, uh, when you go gym, you have to struggle. Yeah. No pain, no gain. That's <laughs> yeah, what they say. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what they say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what is the night of decree or power that Muslims look for during Ramadan? What is the night of decree? So that's what we commonly refer to as Laylatul Qadr, right? What, yeah, yeah. So this is a question that obviously a lot of non-Muslims would ask, but right, also right. a lot of Muslims don't really understand. Right, right. Because a lot of them think that this is the night all my wishes are going to be fulfilled. Exactly, yeah. You know, if I get this night, if I find this night during the month of Ramadan, I'm right. sorted for life. Right, right, right. Is that what it is? So, in the Quran, Allah Himself, you speaks about Laylatul Qadr. Okay. One minute, Han. Let me just get my phone if yeah. I can get the Quran verses for Laylatul Qadr. You explain everything regarding that night. Yeah. So God says in the Quran, uh, "Surely we sent it down, meaning the Quran, on the night of destiny. And what should make thee know what the night of destiny is? 
the night of destiny is better than a thousand months. Mm. And then God says, therein descends angels and the spirit by the command of their Lord. With every matter, it is all peace till the rising of the dawn. So that's, why, that's a good point. Literally at the start of that verse, it mentions that this is when the Quran was revealed, mm -hmm. the night of Laylatul Qadr. Right, right. So there again, you have your association with a lot of blessings there right exactly, away. Exactly, exactly. Um, so the Quran was revealed when there was like... The, wo the world was going through the right. moral decline. Exactly, exactly. And that is the time when yeah. the Quran was revealed. Exactly. And in the same way, it mentions that uh, there's a time of darkness right, right, in right. the Quran. And in light of Laylatul Qadr, it brings a lot of the blessings, reformation. the reformation exactly. of, of, of the that time. That we associate with Ramzan as well, reformation. Yeah. So uh, Laylatul Qadr is not, you shouldn't think that I'm going to pray for that one night and I don't have to pray for a thousand nights. No. Yeah, true, thousand true. Months. That's a misconception yeah, a lot of yeah, people yeah, have. Exactly. And exactly. They, you know, the good thing is that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, or Allah hasn't told us specifically what night it's on. Right. Because if I knew if it's on the 26th, mm. people would not pray properly the whole of Ramadan right, right, right. and then just pray that, that night. But we do find in the Hadith, yeah. you know, the, the sayings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to look for that night, you should look in the last 10 days yep. and more specifically in the odd numbers. Or the odd nights. Or the odd, odd nights, right. yeah. yeah, exactly. Is Eid at the end of Ramadan like Christmas for Christians? Mm. Is Eid at the end of Ramadan like Christmas is for Christians? I think they more want to know around whether we celebrate Eid. Eid's a kind of a celebration right, like Christmas. Right. right. Uh, so for Christians, Christmas is like the celebration of Jesus' birth. Okay. Whereas yeah. for Muslims, we're celebrating the fact that we've gone through that hardship, you know, yeah. gone through that month of gaining that spiritual blessing. Yeah. And then at the end of it, we do a celebration, we do a festival mm. to, you know, end it all off. Yeah. So they all, the Christians also have like a four week countdown right, to right. Christmas, right? But that's not really, there's not much religious significance exactly. behind that. Right. And they're not doing any specific acts during those days, days either. Right. Um, whereas for us, Eid is actually fully just a celebration of the passing of the month of Ramadan. Right, right. And I think what I find so beautiful about the day of, the day of Eid is that Allah recognizes that we, as His servants, have right. gone through a month of struggle exactly. for His sake, right, for right. pleasing Him. Right, right. And for that purpose, He set a day for us purely to celebrate, mm. which is why the Holy Prophet, peace be upon Him, told us that we're not allowed to fast on the day of Eid. Right, right. Because this is supposed to be a day where we must dress up, go to the yes. mosque, mm. eat food, distribute food to other people around yeah. us as well, and have a good time, yeah. really. Um, and I think that's something really, really beautiful about Eid. But it's not for the yeah. celebration of anyone's birth right. or advent or anything like that. It's just for the and, passing of the Ramadan. Right. And even after Eid, we carry on that same spiritual struggle, that spiritual blessing we got through that month. Yeah, it's not like, point. you know, Eid's here and now we can go back to our normal lives. Yeah. Whatever we gain during Ramadan, we then continue it later. Yeah. Eid. It's basically a, giving us a kick that exactly. come back. Exactly. It's like yeah. every year that yeah. uh, ran away us, basically. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that went well. <laughs> uh, the thing is, you know that Lil Tukadu one, I knew it was going to like uh, get me into struggle. Yeah, uh, some of this uh, there, yeah. technical, technical terminology, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Uh, it comes up. Yeah. That's all right. You did fine. 